32 in league history. Goes off here in Houston. Warriors, Rockets on TNT. The Cleveland Cavaliers are waiting for the winner. Clay Thompson and the Golden State Warriors roared back to win game six and force a game seven against James Harden and P.J. Tucker and company. Kevin Durant looking for back-to-back. -back Do they always arrive together? They ride in the same together? vehicle. They ride yes. in the same vehicle. Yes. Steph Curry and the Warriors looking to return. It's a van. They drive in a van. I guess they live to in the each other. Western Conference to the NBA Finals. Only you guys can get sidetracked by how guys get to the arena. I mean, they, right. I've never time. seen guys walk in the arena every game on oh, a home game. P.J. Tucker's an Uber driver, okay? It's been said. Now you know. Now. Hey, welcome, everybody. It's Game 7 of the Western Finals here on TNT. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Charles Barkley. First things first on this Memorial Day as we uh, remember those who gave their lives in defense of this country. We say thank you and we remember uh, fondly the, uh, the sacrifice. Um, we admire, respect them, and the greatest country in the world, we do the worst job of taking care of our vets also, the ones who are still alive. We need to address that. I was raised by a military man, so they know how much I love them. You know, my father was a drill sergeant for a long time. So doing basic training, as a matter of fact, every morning I've seen the hard work they, these guys have put in. And I've always said that uh, our military men and women in this country are underpaid. I want to let you know I appreciate you. We appreciate you. We love you. And happy Memorial Day. Thank them any time. Thank them every time you see them. question. I think overall we, we all feel the same sentiment. Um, 70 years ago, 70 years ago, first game seven in league history. How did that go, Ernie? And it involved, oh, I'm going to get to that. Okay. It involved <laughs> one of the franchises playing in this game seven tonight. It was the Philadelphia Warriors beating the St. Louis Bombers. And it wasn't even close. 85 to 46 on the road. 46 points? 85 to 46. Well, you're not going to win many games scoring 46 points anyway. No. Uh, but that happened 70 years ago. Of course, now uh, you're looking at 2018 and you're looking at game seven between the Warriors and the Rockets. And the question on everybody's mind is Chris Paul going to play? Is Andre Iguodala going to play? We have the answers from the sideline reporters who are working this series. We'll start with uh, Kristen Ledley answer on CP3. As you know, Ernie, he was ruled out for game six with that right hamstring strain. Moments ago, Coach Dan Tony that CP would also be ruled out for this game seven. He was considered a game time decision. He's been reevaluated day to day since the injury, but Coach Dan Tony said it was just too early. Chris wanted to play, but at this point, he knew he could be a detriment to the team. He will be dressed out. He'll be on the bench just like he was in game six. And if the Rockets were to advance to the NBA Finals. He could be ready for Game 1, but the staff's expectation is that he'd be ready by Game 3, depending on his response to treatment. For more on the Warriors' side, our Hall of Famer David Aldridge is standing by. D.A.? Well, Kristen, the Warriors, after their big win in Game 6, come into this Game 7 with a lot of confidence, but they will not come into it with Andre Iguodala. That bone bruise that he suffered earlier in the series simply has not responded quickly enough to treatment, and he will sit out tonight. And yet the Warriors know that they can win this game. They have won here before on the road, and they believe that the four years of experience that they've had during this championship run enables them to be able to stand up to what will be a blast pressure, blast furnace of pressure. <laughs> He's totally frustrated. Um, and if he could play, he would play. But um, he just has not, his body has not responded to this point. We're still hoping that over the next few days, if we're able to win tonight, that, uh, that he will make some improvement. But um, he just has, has not uh, gotten where he needs to be. I took a tip from uh, some PGA guys who used to tell me when they're out there on the course um, and it gets kind of log jam on a couple holes and they got to you know, slow themselves down in between shots so that they uh, can pace themselves for a five hour, six hour round, wherever it is. Um, 
took that as a way, like even you know the way that you do your whole pregame warm up routine or how you go through two line layups, just take it a little slow because your mind might be you know processing things a lot faster. Than now the Warriors did get one bit of good injury news. Kevon Looney was on the injury report with a toe, but he will play tonight. In fact, he's likely to start in this big game seven, EJ. Thank you very much, D.A. It was funny that uh, yesterday in his media availability, Steve Kerr was notified that Kevon Looney was questionable for game seven. That was news to him. He said, well, you know what that means. He says, I'm going to question him tonight and tell him he's playing and he'll be available tonight. What we saw in game six, uh, you know, Steve Kerr says, look, I, I have no idea why our, our team is like this, meaning how can you play that poorly and unfocused in one half and then be so dominant in the second half, but they certainly were in game six as they tied this series, Shaq. You know, a lot of times when you're really, really good, you have to be challenged all the time. And I know these guys have, have a lot on their mind, but you know, they just got punched, and you know, Steve Kerr probably let them have it at halftime, and you know, the good thing about them is they have the ability, and they've been doing it all year, of coming out third quarters, playing really hot. And, you know, they know they had a lot on the line, and you know, Chuck said it, Kenny Stavis said it, Clay Thompson was to save, save the day. Because the other two superstars still really had to have the, you know, superstar type game. Clay Thompson just came out of nowhere and exploded. But, you know, this team has always been able and capable of coming out third quarters, third quarter smoking. And no lead is safe for this team. They got a lot of deadly three-point shooters. I know, Ken, I know that, Kenny, you're going to, we're going to show an on-court breakdown that you recorded earlier. We're going to do that a bit later in this show. Um, but for Charles right now is, is this question. Can the Rockets win this game without Chris Paul? Ernie, I got no idea. I would, you know, I would be surprised if the Rockets won this game. Uh, I'd be totally surprised. I mean, without Chris, there's no way the Rockets should win. But uh, people have been asking me, I have no idea what's going to happen tonight. The Warriors, when, if, they, if they play their best, they're the better team without Chris Paul. The Rockets, if they get off to a great start, like they did in game six, now that game will translate here because they have this this place to be on fire. Uh, but if the Rockets come out, but if the Warriors come out and play like they did the second half, they can't. They they gonna win the game. So I I I don't I never try to get on TV and act like I know what's gonna happen. I give an educated guess. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. Uh, sometimes you're wrong. So I. I don't know what's going to happen tonight. I ain't going to even lie. Kenny, Kenny, do you have a, a better idea of what's going to happen tonight than Charles does? Well, I, I say this. The one thing that the Rockets don't have is the luxury that Steve Kerr has. Uh, if, you, if you were playing chess, Steve ha Kerr, he has like four, three or four queens on his board. They, they're multiple dimensional. They could be interchanged in different areas. They could have length. They could play small. They could play big. Mike D'Antoni can only play one way. He has to play the way they have isolation, quick hitters, and that's it. Where Steve Kerr can all of it. He hasn't even played like a guy like JaVale McGee. I know we make fun of him at times. You know, because he deserves it. No, but when, when he's been very efficient through these trap, these runs, you know, then Bell comes in. He's been efficient. Then Looney at times last series, and, and not as much as this series, but last series been super effective. You know, he has the interchangeability and, and, the, and, and the adaptability that Mike D'Antoni does not have with this team. They can only win, really, one way. Let me just say two things. Number one, black people don't play chess. We play checkers and dominoes. Wait, that's, about? that's right. You, you, that, you right. don't you play chess. Right. We do not. We do not play chess. Black we people play, don't play We play checkers it. and we play dominoes. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Hey, Stop it. I'm not saying Uno. we don't and play those. Uno too. But that is play Uno too. But I think he said he said Mike D'Antoni was playing chess. No, no. He said the Rockets. I'm just letting know. These two knuckleheads. Okay, let me say this, Ernie. I think the only way the Rockets can win. James Harden would have to have a LeBron James type game where he totally controlled the tempo. When I say that, because Kenny always talks about the poor guard controlled the tempo of the game. I don't think the Rockets can run with the Warriors only playing five or six players. So James would have to have a LeBron type game where he got 40, 10, and 10 
and the other guys have to chip in. That's the Rockets' only hope because they don't have – it would have to be a James Harden masterpiece for the Rockets to win the game, in, in my opinion. And they've got – I would like – they've got to they've got to protect the ball as well. You see the, you see the numbers uh, for those who are guarding James Harden. They've had more success with Klay Thompson either than either Curry or Durant. Uh, but turnovers have killed the Rockets. They had 21 of them in game six for 23 points. In the series, they have 97 assists and 96 turnovers. You know, definitely got to take care of the ball, especially against this Golden State team, because they come down, hit you with a layup, hit you with a three. But I would like Mike D'Antoni to come in and give a Gene Hackman, who's your type speech. And I would like his speech to be, see this fellow right here? Chris Paul, he's done a lot. We know what we have to do. We don't need to go over no plays. Let's do it for Chris tonight. City's behind us. Everybody's behind us. We beat this team before. We know we got to do. Let's do it for Chris tonight. Let's just come out and have an inspired game. And no Let's, turnovers. No turnovers. No turnovers. It's Ernie. It's Ernie's game seven. Ernie. We know they plays. They know our plays. Remember, I told you tonight. that before this series started. I said the one concern I had was when the Rockets, they played nonchalant with the ball, and they'll turn into 10-0 bursts against the Warriors. And if they had... I'm going to give you a number. I'm going to say 12. If the Rockets have 12 turnovers or less, they got a chance tonight. The uh, winner of the turnover battle has won each game of this series. And again, 21 of them by the Rockets in game six. Unpopular opinion, Charles Barkley is sexy. Hey, baby, you that ain't no unpopular opinion. It's just a rare First one. First of all, that's not my body. Oh, oh, yes, we know that's a lot slimmer than your body. <laughs> yes, it's hey, a, uh, a lot slimmer. Hey, uh, thank you, darling. I am a big sexy that's man. That's quite a sweater you had on there. <laughs> that was actually a dude. Big sexy. I'm gorgeous. Uh,